Hey guys, Jocelyn here with another tutorial for you. Today I'll be showing you how to make this wire wrapped bale design. And I have done a previous bale tutorial, go ahead and check that out if you haven't seen it before, but I thought I would show you how I make this other style, which is another one of my favorites. As you can see, it is a um, freestanding bale that you add on, it's not integral with the pendant, and uh, it uses a very simple figure eight weave design. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So you are going to need your standard chain nose pliers, round nose pliers, and flush cutters, and do check out in the description section below if you're curious about the exact ones I'm using. And I'll be using 20 gauge wire, you can use any type you like, as long as it's 20 gauge round dead soft, and you'll also need some 28 gauge round dead soft wire. And I do get all my wire from Rio Grande, everyone always asks that. So starting out with the 20 gauge, we're going to cut one piece that is 5 inches long. And for those of you in metric, that's just under 13 centimeters. So we'll just snip that with our flush cutters there. And uh, let me go ahead and show you kind of where we're headed with this uh, design. I did do a quick little sketch just so you can see the plan. Um, so we're going to do that shape and then we're going to weave in that space right there. So basically we'll fold that over then to make the bale. So we're going to start in the center of this wire and just bend it right in half. And I'm going to smoosh that on down so it's got a smaller bend. And you might want to refine this with your round nose pliers. So we're kind of going to make a little teardrop shape at the bottom there of the center. And then we're going to start taking those two ends and turning them parallel to each other. Um, so they're just touching and they're running parallel. And I'm just going to refine that shape a little bit with my chain nose pliers. So you should have something that's looking like this now. And I'm going to pull out my ruler just so you can kind of see where we're at um, to be making yours the same shape and size. And I'm marking where we're next going to make our next bend. So right around there, we're going to take those two wire ends back out again. So we have a short little segment of the wires running parallel to each other. And then we're bending them back out into a triangular shape, just like so. And then we're going to need to cut a piece of our 28 gauge wire. I'm going to cut a piece that's about three yards long. Um, you might find that you need more, just depending on how you make your specific weave. So you might want to start with more than what I'm doing here. And a lot of people will actually wind their weaving wire onto a bobbin or something so you can have a long length. But I'm just going to take the end of that and kind of have about, oh, let's see here. I want to say about between five and six inches of a tail that we're leaving. And then you're going to take the longer end and start wrapping it around both of the wires there, just like that. And you want to make sure that both of these wraps are very tight, so I'm just snugging it down with my chain nose pliers. We're going to wrap a few more times, and then we're going to start making our figure eight weave. So if you're not familiar with this, we're just going to take the wire over and wrap a couple times around one of those base wires. And again, I'm tightening it down as I go to make sure everything is staying right, all the wires are staying right next to each other. And then we're going to take it across in a figure eight motion to the other base wire. And we're going to wrap it a few times in the opposite direction around that other wire, just like that. And with each wrap, I'm going to push the wire down so it meets the next one. And I like to do about three or four wraps around each base wire before I transfer my weaving wire over to the other side. Um, you can do however many wraps you want. The more wraps you do in between transferring your weaving wire over, the more open your weave is going to look. And of course, the fewer wraps you do on each base wire, the more tight and close together your weave is going to look. So again, I'm wrapping about three or four times over one of those base wires. And then when you transfer it over to the other base wire, you want to reverse directions. So if your weaving wire is coming from underneath the uh, right hand base wire, you're going to take it so that it's then going over top of the left base wire. And then you'll wrap that one three or four times. 
and then again your wire will be coming from underneath the left wire and you're going to take it over so that it's going over top of the right base wire and you'll just repeat doing that. And I am snugging this down as I go. Um, occasionally my weave starts getting a little bit loose and I just like to go in there with my chain nose pliers and make sure that I'm keeping the wrap nice and tight. So you should have something that's looking like this now. And again, we're just doing a figure eight weave, so if you get a little bit confused about this, just think about how you would draw a figure eight with a pencil. That's basically what we're doing with this weaving wire going back and forth between the two base wires. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue weaving like this uh, for about another, I don't know, three eighths of an inch or so. So you should be having something now that looks roughly like this. And let's go ahead and measure this once again, just so you can kind of see where we're at and where you should be at. We're at a little bit over one inch um, as far as where our weaving wire is ending. So that's kind of what you're looking for. And at this point, we're going to once again make a change in where these base wires are heading. We're just going to bend them right above our weaving so that they are once again going parallel to each other and you have about a quarter inch gap between them. And of course you can have that gap be slightly larger or smaller. It will just change the uh, finished size of your completed bale. And we're just going to continue that weave doing the exact same thing, the simple figure eight with three or four wraps in between each uh, crossover of your weaving wire. And we're going to continue that for about another, I don't know, quarter of an inch or so, maybe a little bit more than that, uh, with both of those base wires going parallel to each other. So just go ahead and continue that. All right, so you should have something that is looking roughly like this, and I will once again measure it so you can see where we're lining up. So this should be the kind of overall length that we're looking at so far. And then I will also measure the straight portion that we've made. So that's going to be, again, about a quarter of an inch on the straight portion. And now we're just going to take those base wires and cross them back over, again making a kind of triangular shape to mirror what we did before the straight portion. And you will have the ends crossing over each other. And you want the shape and length of that sort of triangle above the straight portion to be uh, about the same as the triangle below the straight portion. And this will help your uh, bale to look symmetrical on the front and the back. And once again, we will just continue with that figure eight weave. And for this one, we're going to go all the way down until we um, get to that point where the two wires cross over each other. So we're just going to continue the figure eight weave down to there. So it should be looking like this now. And at this point, we're going to take our round nose pliers and start swirling those ends uh, towards the outside. 
on opposite directions. And we're just going to make little loops with those two ends, just like that. And you might need to refine with your chain nose pliers just to make sure that those loops are symmetrical on both sides. So you should have something that looks roughly like this now, that general shape. And now we can go ahead and start shaping the bale. I'm going to use the handle of a paintbrush here just to get that round shape, bending it over on itself. Of course, you can use any object that's at hand that is a nice rounded shape. So we should have something that's looking like this now. And now we're going to form the little loop at the bottom uh, where we can actually hang our pendant off of the bale. And I slowed this down because my camera kind of glitched out and I lost some footage. So let me just show you where I'm placing the round nose pliers. They're going to be right on this area here. And we're just going to loop that bottom bit over so that it looks like this. So we just made a little loop with that bottom portion. So it should be looking like that now. And this is the point at which we're going to need to add on our pendant and we'll use these wire tails on either side to actually finish it off and bind that back loop portion in such a way that the pendant cannot fall off the back of this bale. So that's what we're going to be doing next. We'll just slide the pendant over that back loop, that open area. So here's the pendant I'm going to be using. And if you're interested, this is actually going to be the next tutorial that I do to make this pendant. So if you want to make sure that you don't miss that, go ahead and make sure that you are subscribed and you click that little notification bell so you get notified when I post that one. It will be my next one. So we're just going to, again, slide the top part of the pendant onto that back open portion on the bale. And then we're going to smush that down so that the back part of the bale meets the front part, just like that. And I'm just using my chain nose pliers to make sure that it is snug there. And then we're going to take this tail and we're going to tuck it around and through that bottom loop to close in the uh, pendant that's hanging on there so that it can't slide off the end. I'm just going to pull that tight. I'm going to wrap it, I don't know, four or five times around there, just like that, pulling it snug each time. And again, this is going to lock in so there's no opening for the pendant to slide off of the bale. I'm just tightening it down with my chain nose pliers as I go. So again, threading it through, pulling it tight. There we go. All right, and then for the other tail on the other side, we're going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to uh, take it to the back and I'm going to start wrapping it around the other side of that little loop. So pushing it through and I'm going to kind of mirror image what we did on the other side. I'm going to wrap it around the same number of times. Again, just for added security so that we've got two wires instead of one that are um, just connecting this whole thing together and keeping the, that portion of the bale closed. So again, just looping it through, wrapping it uh, pulling it tight each time to secure those wraps. There we go. And let's do one more. Alright, so it should be looking like that. You've got your two tails. They've both been wrapped around that back portion. And now we want to finish off these tails. So to do that, I'm going to take the longer one and I'm just going to start wrapping it as tightly as I can around that entire base portion of the bale. So both the, uh, both the front and the back, I'm just wrapping it around both at that narrowest portion. And wherever you can find to kind of snug down these wraps so it all lies flat, that's fine. You don't have to finish it off the exact way that I'm doing, but that is what I'm going to be doing. And then I'm going to uh, feed it through the center of the bale a couple times. through that little opening there. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. And again, you don't have to do the exact same thing that I'm doing as long as you get everything secured and you get these ends fastened off in such a way that they're not going to be loose and poking anybody. But again, I'm going to be threading it down through that little opening right there and pulling it tight. So it's looking like that now. And then I'm just going to snip off the end 
with my flush cutters and I'm just going to push that little end kind of underneath uh, and smush it down with my chain nose pliers in such a way that it's hidden and it's not going to uh, have a pokey catchy bit sticking out to uh, you know snag on your clothing or whatever. So for this other one I'm going to do start out by doing the same thing going in the opposite direction again just wrapping it several times around that um, narrowest portion of the bale. And then I decided on this one that I'm going to do kind of a little X shape on the front so I'm going to take it from one diagonal side to the other and then straight across the back you can see there I'm just tucking it through pulling it tight and then I will take it on the opposite diagonal so that I've made a little cross shape on the front of the bale. I thought that would be pretty I don't finish it that way every time sort of like that and then I'm just going to find a place to wrap and finish off that last little tail in such a way that it's snug and secure and not going to come apart so I'm gonna trying trying to find a place to tuck it so I'm inspecting it here to think for a moment and uh, I decided to just take it through the center of the bale there and pulling it tight coming through the other side and I'm testing that it's pretty snug and then I'm going to tuck it down and under right there and snip it off with my flush cutters and once again using my chain nose pliers to really squeeze that loose end and tuck it. So there we go, that is our completed bale added onto a pendant and I think this style looks really nice on any sort of wire weave pendant in particular um, and it's again great for ones that don't have an integrated bale. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial, found it helpful and easy to follow. Feel free to leave comments below if you ran into any issues. And again, stay tuned for that tutorial I will be posting before too long on how to do this pendant. If you're interested, make sure you click that little notification bell so that you don't miss it when it comes out. Thanks so much for watching and happy crafting!